Today is a very special anniversary at our business. We have July 4, 2014 and June 30, 2016. On July 4, 2014, I decided that we were done outsourcing board repair to another business. That after five and a half years of being in business, it's about time that we be able to do it on our own time, with our own quality control, on our own terms, right here. And that went very, very well. I decided that I was going to record this entire journey. Not just to be able to teach other people how to do it, but also so that you could really see what it was like in the beginning when I wasn't great at it. I figured that if you saw somebody else struggling in the beginning, that you would be encouraged as well. For me, it's very discouraging when I see people who are masters at their craft at the end of it. I like to see how it is when they were learning because it reminds me that they started someplace too, that they were human and they made the same mistakes that I would make. And I decided to get a camera, get a setup, put it over my shoulder so that you could watch that entire thing unfold. And it went very, very well. Tens of thousands of people subscribed and decided to watch this content and learn something. Now, on June 30th in 2016, I received a phone call from a company that seemed unhappy with the content that I was producing. That company was Kilpatrick & Townsend, a law firm that was working and calling on behalf of Apple Inc. That law firm requested that I edit out or remove a video that I did that I'll link to below. How Unauthorized Idiots Repair Apple Laptops. The title was a small jab at the fact that at a lot of places they'll make fun of people who were unauthorized or say that they don't know what they're doing, which is something that's changed a lot over the past two years. So I decided to release a video showcasing how it is you would fix a MacBook Air that had liquid damage in the trackpad where the trackpad and the keyboard weren't working. I walk you through to where the fuse for the keyboard and the trackpad are on the motherboard. I show you how that circuit works by using one page of a 70 page schematic on screen and then I replace that little fuse and I show you the machine working afterwards. And I show you how it is you could come to the conclusion that this is the problem so that you can diagnose that problem on your own. When they called me and suggested that I remove this video, I was conflicted. I couldn't edit out the section that they were bothered by. And the section they were bothered by was the section where I show you where the fuse is on the motherboard using a schematic document obtained from somewhere on the internet that details how that machine is put together. I was at a crossroads here. I contacted an attorney the next day because I know that Apple doesn't really have a very nice history when it comes to independent repair shops. There are companies that I knew of that had been raided by Immigration and Customs Enforcement for iPhone screens and Apple backs. So I was not prepared for the best. And I created a video that at this time I regret looking back on it because it was fairly anxiety and paranoia ridden. But I really thought that that was the end. I remember running around the store and taking everything that had an Apple logo on it, throwing it in a trash bag, putting it in the front. My staff probably thought I was losing my mind that day. But then again, they probably think that every single day if they work with somebody like me. So a few days pass and I calm down and I contact a lawyer. And the lawyer talks to Kilpatrick and Townsend and says, I think you should just take down the video. They're asking you to take down this video. And they're asking, in a, in, you know, they're asking nicer than they would ask uh, somebody else. So I think you should do it. And this is where what Eli the computer guy used to say came into my head. He used to say something along the lines of, you have to take responsibility and accountability for the decisions that you make. You can pay an attorney, you can pay an accountant, but you're always welcome to pay their fee, take their advice under acknowledgement, and then completely ignore it. It's your responsibility for the decisions that you make with your life. And I thought about everything that I had been building up over the past two years. I thought about the people like Tim or Chris Long or Michael Oberdick or um, STS Telecom or all these other people that either learned something from watching these videos or decided to start making videos on repairing stuff because they saw other people making videos. And I thought about all of this being just tossed away because some company decided that I should remove my content because they were aggravated by it. And I said, no, I appreciate my attorney's advice, but I'm not going to follow that. I have responded with a letter that said, I'm more than happy to remove my content under one condition. You need to file a DMCA claim. The reason I said that is because filing a DMCA claim makes it public. It's no longer a private phone call where you're calling me and asking me to delete content that after I delete, there's no evidence I deleted because of your phone call. This way, it would be public. As I've said in a video that I'll link to below, if you're going to be the bitch, be the whole bitch. If you do not want your millions of customers to know how to replace a fuse on their device if it breaks so that they bring it to you to pay $750 to have it fixed when this failure occurs, that, that, that's cool. No problem with it. Just make sure that you sign your name to that. And that's what I said in my letter. After I wrote that letter, I never heard from them again. They never asked me to remove my content. They didn't file any claims on my content. And all of it is still here. This anniversary celebrates that decision. 
Because while my decision to jump to the paranoid or anxious conclusion that, oh my God, the stormtroopers and ice are coming, which has happened to other businesses, but it didn't happen to mine, may have been the wrong one, I, did, I do believe I made the right decision in terms of keeping all of my content up and continuing to make educational content, continuing to do, provide things like the forum and the, and, the, and the separate video playlist where you can go through and figure out how to solve your specific issue. I'm happy that I left all of that up. And today is a celebration of that. I also want to thank all of you for providing the support during that time that was necessary for that to get done. And when I say support, I don't mean paying for stuff or buying stuff for me or giving me money. When I say support, I mean watching these videos, using them to repair devices, and showing the world that repair is not just a good thing, but a fun thing. Not only can you save money, not only do you get to make stuff work again that otherwise wouldn't work, but it's actually interesting to dig into a device and use some analytical thinking and solve a puzzle and figure it out and get that great little dopamine kick at the end of it that shows up when you make something work again out of nowhere through nothing but your own ingenuity. That is fun and it's addictive. And every single one of you that took part in watching these videos and using it to make something work or getting somebody else involved in repair, you're the reason that this channel still exists and you're the reason that I'm still here. So I want to say thank you very much for the support that you've provided over these years by sharing this content and using it to make devices work again, because you're the reason that we're seeing this shift in the culture towards devices becoming more repairable. You're the reason that when somebody went to an authorized store four years ago that they could say, if somebody says they can do that, that's impossible, too, and we don't recommend it, but call this guy, he's probably cheaper than us. This shift in culture has occurred because of all of you, and you should pat yourself on the back for that. And I say thank you for providing that support to myself and my channel throughout this, these past four years. Now, what I also want to talk about is this idea that sharing information in a capitalist society is bad. It's going to be terrible for business. It's a stupid decision. A lot of people pointed out four and a half years ago that what I planned to do was very dumb. I was going to put all the time, money, and effort into figuring out how to do something. And then after I did that, I was going to share every single piece of information that I learned through hard work, misery, sitting here until four in the morning making measurements, driving myself nuts with the world in an easily accessible fashion. And that I was going to put work into making it easily accessible and easily viewable by all people, even 11-year-olds that want to fix their own boards, and I'll link to that video below. People would say that your business will go down because people are going to open up stores, or your business will go down because people will fix things themselves, or people are going to see how you fix things and they'll criticize it and they won't want to send stuff to you, like, I want those customers anyway that are going to say, you're using the wrong solder type and blah, blah, blah. If you want those customers, you can have them. Not for me. Well, to address the first point that other stores are going to open, yes, other stores are going to open that do the same thing. I will have a smaller percentage of the pie. However, it will be a bigger pie. I would rather have 5% of a pie that's this big than 20% of a pie that's this big. By producing this content and sharing this information, I've let lots of hundreds of thousands of people know that this type of repair is possible, that if a board is dead, it does not need to go to an Apple store. That if somebody says it's unfixable and 100% unfixable all the time, that they're full of it. You don't have to accept that if a drop of liquid gets on something, that it's entirely dead. As a result of that, way more people know that this type of service is possible. It doesn't matter if other stores exist. It doesn't matter if other stores have opened up near me. It doesn't matter if people undercut us on eBay for whatever prices, because there is such a bigger pie now compared to before, and all of that business cannot be handled by those competitors. It needs to be spread about, and there's enough business for everybody. Further, it's not just the information that is what makes you successful. It's the implementation of that information that makes you successful. How do you set up your store? How do you deal with your customers? How do you use the information I've given you to, in the real world, actually do the work? That's the hard part. It's not just the information. It's the implementation of the idea. The idea itself does not mean as much. The second idea is that people are going to fix things themselves. Most people are not going to fix it themselves just because you give them the information. And if they're going to fix it themselves just because you give them the information, chances are they probably weren't going to bring it to you anyway because they're the type of person that's going to scour the internet to find it and figure it out on their own, and they're so stubborn that they would even break it rather than pay some jackass evil backroom scamming mechanic to do it for them they're going to fix it themselves anyway. However, most people are not paying for the information. 
They're paying for the delivery. They're paying for the experience. They're paying for the fact that they don't have to set up a soldering station in their living room and explain to their wife or their husband why there's flux fumes in the kitchen. They're paying for it to be done quickly, properly, and for the entire experience to be handled by another individual. That's what they're paying for. Further, most people don't like to do business at the point of a gun. Most people do not like the idea that I would be able to do this myself if only I had this information. So when you give them the information, it's no longer this, this kind of uh, coercive seeming transaction where they would happily do it themselves, they just don't have the info. You say, here's the info. If you'd like to do it yourself, here's the list of tools you need, here's the exact procedure, here's how we diagnose it, and here's how we do it. When you provide somebody with that, you show them that you're on their side. Most people, given the choice to do business with somebody who goes, <laughs> I know what's wrong with it, but I'm not telling you because I'm the dick. Now pay me. Or the choice to do business with somebody that says, here's a complete guide on how to do my job. Have fun. Here's all the information you need. If you want to do it yourself, that's free. If you want to come here, it's, what, uh, it's 200 bucks. Given people the choice, most people would rather do business with the person that is open. Most people would rather do business with the individual where they feel like they have a choice. People do not like being coerced. Even if they know that they have no idea what they're doing, even if they know that there is no chance of them successfully fixing their device, they will fight and argue and be stubborn and try to do something on their own just because you're hiding that information behind some sort of wall. But if you put that information up, they'll say, you know what, I trust this person. Or here, I appreciate everything you've done, just do it for me. Given the choice between the douchebag or the person who's been open with the information, most customers will, gi will give the business to the individual that's been open with the information, even if their turnaround time is a bit longer, even if they charge a little bit more money. These have been my findings. So why am I mentioning this to you? The way, reason I'm mentioning this is because the best way that you could support this channel and pay me back for all the time I've put into creating these guides is doing the same thing within your own fields of expertise. I have a very narrow window of expertise. I know exactly what the PPBush G3 hot voltage should be when the SMC is running or is dead on a certain number of boards. I know exactly what the diode mode measurements to ground should be on certain backlight ICs on certain motherboards. But that's a very narrow window. There's a lot that I don't know. And there's a lot that I may know that you don't, but there's also a lot that you know that I don't know. And that information that you have in your narrow field of expertise is information that can probably help a lot of people. It can probably make the world a better place. It could probably make life easier for a lot of people who need it to be easier right now. And if you share that information, you can be a part of making the world a better place and making the world and life easier for a lot of people who could really use it. If you think that you shouldn't share that information, because if you share that information, things are going to go worse for you, your business will do worse, your salary will go down, I want you to just look at the example that's been created with me. It's four years since a lot of people said that what I'm doing was stupid. I'm still paying my staff, and there's more staff now than there were four years ago. I'm still paying rent, I'm still paying my insurance, I'm still paying all of my expenses in one of the most expensive cities in Manhattan in the United States. And I'm totally fine. So I would like to suggest that if you know information that you think can make the world a better place, that you share it. Even if there's people telling you that it's going to do you worse or something's going to go terribly wrong if you do it, just do it. This is the direction that the world is going in, and these are the people that aver on average people want to deal with. Put something good into the world right now. Provide information that helps people. Be a part of making the world a better place, and I guarantee you there will be a way to monetize it. Even if you can't figure out exactly what that way to monetize it is right now, if you are a part of making the world a better place, the world will figure out how to ensure that you're taken care of. And just to walk you through, in case you're new to the channel and not sure how it is you should make use of the information that I put here, I'm going to scroll through and show you some of the ways that you can learn. The first resource I suggest people use to learn how to do this type of board repair is to check out our training guide. This is a 150 page plus document that goes over a lot of basic electronics, as well as going over a lot of how to troubleshoot MacBooks that are dead or have no backlight or are not charging or are doing something funny. I go over a lot of the basic MacBook circuits and I walk you through basic electronics. After you have a little bit of an idea of what may be wrong with the machine, or at least how to measure around and try to figure out what your problem is, the second resource that you have is the channel itself. 
If you go to youtube.com slash Rossman Group, you'll see playlists. So once you have an understanding of how to at least measure and kind of figure out what your problem is, you can then come here and find specific playlists tailored to your problem. So if PP bus G3 hot is missing, here's how you fix it. If you're missing PM sleep S4L, here's a lot of common uh, failure modes where PM sleep S4L will be missing. If you have no backlight, here's how to fix it. If you have no light in the charger, here's how to fix it. If it doesn't recognize the battery, here's how to fix it. And also, if there's a very specific flaw in a specific model because of a design flaw, I have one playlist here dedicated to Apple's design flaws over the past 10 years, how they manifest themselves in flaws in the computer, and how to repair them. I recommend watching these edited videos if you're learning, and they're all included in the MacBook Component Level Logic Board playlist, because I'll take a problem, I'll explain what went on from the beginning to the end, and I'll go from broken to fixed in a short period of time with editing. With live streams, it's really difficult to follow, especially if you're new, but this stuff over here that I've put in the organized into the playlists is all easily accessible even by newbies. The third resource we have here is the forum. If you absolutely need the information spoon-fed to you and you don't have time to go through a lot of that stuff, you can come here to the forum where for $29 a month, we will answer your questions. This forum is designed more for the people who have repair shops who are going to be profiting off of this, where $29 a month is a drop in the bucket compared to the $10,000 bucks they are making off of all the board repair. So here you can ask questions. We have an engineer here named Duke who is full-time who will answer the we have an engineer here named Duke who is paid to answer your questions. I used to answer these questions for free when I was below 4,000 subscribers, but once it exploded to around 50,000 subscribers, I realized it was impossible to keep up with the questions and unfortunately had to put the uh, answering questions behind a paywall and have a dedicated person for that. But that's about it for today. Thank you very much for the past four years. I hope to continue producing this content into the future. We've got quite a bit of touch bar content coming up where we're gonna be going over some common flaws in touch bars that cause no charging, how to fix it, where to get parts for them. And as always, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I hope that the next four years brings even more fun, excitement and repairs than the past.